What's up guys and welcome to the channel. It's Ioana here, founder and CEO of Subwell and I just got in a new running shoe for my rotation. It is the Brooks Hyperion Max. This is one that I've been super excited about running in. It's non-plated, it's responsive, it has all the qualities that I'm looking for right now in my training block. So in this video, I'm gonna go over all the details, why I got it, why I'm excited about it, and my initial impressions from my first run. Let's get into it. So I got the Brooks Hyperion Max as the replacement for my trusty old Saucony Endorphin Speed 3. The Speed 3 is a super foam, Piva foam, 100% shoe with that nylon plate in here. Super bouncy, it makes it very easy to run in. It's got a nice strong rocker up front, but I was leaning on the shoe a bit too much over the past months. And I felt that this shoe and the Saucony Endorphin Pro 3 and the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 we're all making the work of running a little bit too easy for me. So I wanted to go for something that was a bit more traditional feeling. Now this is cushioned, it does have a rocker, but it's not gonna give me as much support and pop as that Speed 3. So my primary hope for using this is gonna be for those long runs, for those faster tempo efforts, and also as a speedier everyday shoe and I wanna push the pace a little bit. I also got this shoe for $117 from Dick Sporting Goods. They had one of those deals where they would only show you the price once it was in your cart. So go ahead and check out that Dick Sporting Goods site if you're looking for a deal on the Brooks Hyperion Max. I also saw some others talking about other sites where this might be on sale right now. I don't know if they're gonna come out with new colorways of this or the second edition. They did just drop the Brooks Hyperion, so you might be able to find this on sale from that initial MSRP of $170. Now, you might be wondering why the title of this video has Boomberry Zoomberry in it and why there's a picture of a kid's book in the thumbnail. When I first got this in, my daughter came into my office and She's four years old, but she's more perceptive than my wife, I guess, because every time I get a new pair of shoes, she'll point it out on the rack and say, Daddy, you got a new pair of shoes. So she was holding this one and she said that this pattern up here looked like raspberry and strawberry jam. And we often like reading this book, Jamberry for Bedtime. It was one that my mom read to me when I was growing up and now I read it to my daughter. So we decided to call these shoes the Jamberry or the Boomberry Zoomberry. Maybe the left one is Boomberry and the right one is Zoomberry because it says that in the book. Boomberry, Zoomberry, rocket shoot by. <laughs> Shout out to Bruce Dagan. So that's the question for this video. Let me know in the comments, how do you name your shoes in Strava? I typically go for a song name or an artist name that I'm listening to. For example, for the Hoka Mach 5s, they're an orange. So I named those the Organic Smoothies. Shout out to Larry June. I named these Audi Zero SLs the Stove God Cooks because they remind me of his album cover for Reasonable Drought. And these, of course, are gonna be the Boomberry Boomberry, Zoomberry, because my daughter said they looked like Raspberry Jam. So let me know, how do you name your shoes in Strava? So in terms of the specs of this, this is a non-plated, lightweight daily trainer or tempo shoe. It comes in at 7.8 ounces for that US men's sample size nine. The foam is a super critical EVA compound called DNA Flash. It's also in the Hyperion Elite shoe, but that has a plate in it. And it is going to be a neutral shoe. And you can tell because Brooks will put GTS on any of their models that have stability built into them. All right, let's get into the ride on the Brooks Hyperion Max. So I laced these up this morning for an eight mile aerobic effort around the neighborhood. I did a double run day yesterday where in the morning I had a two by three mile workout and in the evening I went to the gym, did 30 minutes on the treadmill and some squats. My legs were pretty fatigued today. This might not have been the best choice, but I did want to get some miles in it before I use it for my long run this weekend just to work out the kinks and see if it's going to work for me. The answer to that is yes, but probably not the best shoe for a day when I'm feeling kind of beat up. That being said, the first mile or two were not the most pleasant in this. It does have a really firm feel straight out of the box. I'm wondering if it needs some time to break in. So I've been running in some pretty firm shoes like the Adidas Audi Zero SL. This is a standard EVA. I was also coming from running in my last training cycle and the Saucony Endorphin Shift 3 a lot, which again is a standard EVA. And the Hyperion Max, at least out of the box, is firmer than either of those two shoes. You can see here, 
it's not giving me much feedback when I compress it in. And I can see why people say that Hyperion Elite is a bit too firm with the plate in it because this even unplated is super firm. Now you can see on the push test here, I'm not gonna get too much feedback when I push it in. Now in terms of the ride, I mentioned that this midsole foam is a bit firm, but with the way that the platform is set up here, there is a nice rocker up front. And they also have this back rocker here. The way that this is set up, it feels a bit weird when I was four foot striking and trying to run with the same type of form that I run in when I'm using some of the shoes that I've been pulling on heavily in my rotation recently, like the Rebel V3 and the Audi Zero SL. This, with this rocker platform, and especially with this chunky heel back here, did not feel good when I was trying to midfoot to forefoot strike. It felt best when I was heel striking and letting the platform roll me through. So that's something to keep in mind. If you are a forefoot striker, this might not be the best shoe for you with the way this rocker is set up. And the other thing with it is some shoes, they do okay if you don't completely cinch down the laces. For example, the Tracksmith Elliott Runner, which I like using as a daily trainer, I will leave the laces tied so I can slip them on and off. I'll keep them kind of loosely tied. With this, I tied it in my normal lace tying way where they're not completely cinched down and it felt super unstable and wobbly. So about a mile into it, I stopped, I retied it, I cinched them down and it felt way better. So that's a note I would say with the fit, just keep in mind you're going to need to tie them down tight out of the box before it molds around your foot. All right, now to talk about the favorite part of everyone on this channel, the outsole. This is another reason why I was super excited to get this shoe in. You can see it has an amazing outsole here. It is very thick. I wish I could measure it, but it's probably five millimeters deep here. Let me see if I can get, yeah, look at that. Look how deep that outsole rubber is. Nice job, Brooks. Good job, Brooks killing it with the outsole. This is gonna be a really durable shoe, especially on the back here. This is where I tend to see a lot of wear. I think this is gonna hold up really nicely. It is strategically placed like the Saucony Endorphin Speed 3, but if you look at the way that it's placed versus the Speed 3, you're gonna see that the Brooks, they just do it a lot deeper. So nice job, Brooks. I think we're gonna see this hold up pretty well. Hopefully I can get this to 350 miles before we retire it. All right guys, so there we have it. Those are my initial thoughts on the Hyperion Max. I'm looking forward to taking this out for a long run test over the weekend. Maybe I'll do another video with that. I'm for sure gonna start taking this for some of those race pace workouts and longer tempo workouts and use it for those everyday efforts when I wanna pick up the pace. As always, thank you for liking, thank you for subscribing, and I'll make sure to keep you up to date on the latest and greatest in the world of performance running.